Hello, my name's Kathleen Taylor and I've written a book about cruelty. Um, the first thing that people normally ask me when I uh, tell them this is, why on earth did you write a book about such a horrible topic? And I say, well, it is a horrible topic, but it's also really, really important um, because although most cruelty is minor, and of course minor cruelty affects us all, some cruelty is very extreme. Now, you might say, okay, sure, but that's rare. You know, normally I'm not going to worry because I'm not going to be affected. But the trouble is that you as a victim or a potential victim have very little control over whether you will be affected by, for example, war, terrorist atrocities, even a serial killer. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about, the extreme cruelty of atrocities. Okay, so you have very little control, if you like, over whether you're going to be a victim. Perhaps more troubling is that you have very little control over whether you're going to be a perpetrator. And that's worrying. Cruelty, I guess, the book is, it's about atrocity. Sure, it's about harm doing. It's about human evil, I guess. So that makes it a really, really huge topic. Um, there's been lots of books on this, you know, evolutionary psychology, social psychology, religion, you name it. They've all talked about it. But for all those books, very few of them have actually mentioned the human brain, which is kind of odd, really, because that's the mechanism. It's the means by which we express cruelty and everything else. And it's not only the mechanism, but it's a mechanism which is constrained. It's got weaknesses, it's got strengths, it's, um, it operates in certain ways, but not others. So I thought, as a neuroscientist, that it would be interesting to, to look at that in terms of those constraints and say, well, you know, maybe this will shed some light on the problem of cruelty. And that's what I've tried to do. Cruelty, of course, is a, ble I mean, it's a bleak book. There's no getting away from that. But I'm not altogether despairing because uh, I'm a bit of a science optimist. Um, the neurosciences, the modern neurosciences that we have nowadays are so powerful and have such amazing tools that I really am a hopeful that we can at least begin to reduce this, this problem of cruelty. I think if we can bring to bear what we already know about the brain, um, what we already know about cruelty, put those two together, drive further research, that we really have a chance of doing something about this human misery.